So here we'll go ahead and start. And now what it's going to do is this is going to take a while and this is going to do what's called an OpenGL rendering, which is nowadays the main rendering mode you'll use when you're in 3D. It'll take a little while because of how much is in this file, but once we render that way, if I go back to the last save view, and then I go back to this rendering mode again, it'll come up relatively quickly because it's cached in the file. If I were to close the file and open it again, it would be slower, but just to give you an idea. So if that takes longer on your machine, that's why. It's because I've opened it before. And you can see I'll show off the uh, connection a little bit here. You'll see how we move. There we go. And you can see I have full control. The mouse is still over here. I'm not doing anything with the mouse. You can see it up there on the object info palette. Turn it left, turn it right, fly up, fly down, turn completely around. And I want to point out something else. Do you see how the motion gets jittery when I'm looking at all these objects? That's because OpenGL is only processing what I have on the screen. So if I turn around this way, and I'm facing just this corner where there's just a few trees, it gets very quick and it can even maintain most of the shadows constantly. As I turn around, it gets fast, so it has to regenerate the shadows after I've already looked at it for a little bit. We'll go ahead to the next view. And these are just sort of uh, slides. Go ahead and close that forever. These are just sort of slides that show what we're going to go through. Uh, understanding rendering is a couple things. Uh, we, we wanted to explain the RenderWorks modes, but we also wanted to explain the sort of non-RenderWorks rendering modes, because really anything that's on your screen is effectively rendering. If you draw a picture of a circle, that's technically a rendering. Um, so the first part of what we'll explain is the actual wireframe view, uh, the different things you can do with OpenGL, and a few other things like that. So here you can see this is hidden line, or this is wireframe. Uh, so this is still a 3D view, but it's it's difficult, especially with a model as complex as this, to see where things are, what I'm selecting. It's it's hard to tell. That's the main reason that we use OpenGL. Like even once you get in the model, it's hard to tell what corner you're looking at. It doesn't look recognizable. And in a fully fleshed out like commercial file with full office furniture and things like that, you'd never know where you were just from looking at wireframe. OpenGL gives it a little surface, and that's a little more useful. Go ahead and move to the next save view. And now this is going to be OpenGL set to what we call plain, which is just no colors, no textures. So in a moment, I'll pull up the OpenGL window and explain what I'm showing. So you see it's all gray here. Everything is solid, but everything is, is grayed out. There's no color, there's no texture, there's no transparency. And what I'm doing here, if you go to view rendering, and this is where you would set any rendering settings for the default render modes. You can see here it's set to medium, but all of these options are turned off. Textures, colors, anti-aliasing, edges, all off. That's saved in this save view. So what I'm going to do next is use this next save view. And this is going to turn on just colors, not textures. So you can see there's no transparency over here. This window is, is the bluish greenish tint that the window actually is, but it doesn't have its transparent element to it. And the textures, of course, the boards are not on the walls, the chairs are not textured at all. They're not reflective anymore. They're all that same sort of blocky gray. And you can see there's no shadows, there's no light going on. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn on textures, but I'm going to leave colors turned off. It'll re-render. Now see, this looks a little different. So you can see it sort of looks like the plain view, but you can see I now have transparency, but no color. So you don't get the blue windows, you just get a perfectly clear window. If you were to look around a little bit, You'll see that I can see outside. The transparency is working. So this is, if you're, if you're trying to get a, just a very clean view, and you can use this as an artistic view later on. There's a few things you can do to tweak this to make it look a little more interesting. And the main reason you would do that is because OpenGL is relatively fast. I'm not fast forwarding anything here. You're seeing a real recording in real time. And if we turn on textures and edges, but no colors, now it gives it a little more definition. So what this has done is in the view rendering and OpenGL options menu, it's enabled draw edges. And you can set these thicker or thinner. Generally, one is fine. Uh, it's a little more obvious uh, depending on what the resolution of your screen is. This monitor is a standard resolution. I think it's 1920 by 1200. So if you have a retina display and you set this to one, one pixel on your screen is going to be much smaller and much more finely detailed. And it won't have, uh, this is called aliasing. It won't have that as much as it might have otherwise. Actually, I'll go ahead and show you that now. 
We turn on anti-aliasing, it attempts to smooth these out a little bit. Now, the higher resolution your monitor, the better that will look. And if you were to do a viewport of this, and you set that DPI higher, which we will go over in a little bit, then you won't need to worry about that aliasing at all. That won't appear. That's just because we're in a quick view mode here. Now here's one where we're using textures and colors enabled both at the same time. So textures have an element of color to them. They have a base generally just called color. You can load that with an image or you can just set a solid color for it. And this is just very specifically, you can see there's now a little detail. There's a concrete texture here, a simple grass here. Uh, the, the, there's a green reflect, reflective uh, plastic texture to the chairs. And that's all turned on now. But it still looks a little, it, you can go a little further with OpenGL. Here we'll enable the textures and colors and shadows. I'm sorry, just the textures and shadows. So what I'll do now is these are accurate shadows and they're being calculated by what's called a heliodon. There's one, I believe it's up and to the right of us at the moment. Uh, we'll go over that in a moment as well. And this is just showing the shadows. So now this will be significantly slower than if you don't have shadows turned on. Shadows are relatively resource heavy when it comes to OpenGL because basically it has to do the math of all that light striking all these objects in addition to showing the objects themselves. And this is when you turn pretty much everything back on. And here we'll have OpenGL turned pretty much all the way up. I have it set to medium at the moment. You can set it higher. I can turn the quality of these shadows up. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm keeping everything in medium. Now, that's important for you as well. If you want to be working in Vectorworks, if you want to be actually doing work and doing modeling, generally you want to leave these turned down because you don't want to be slowed down. You don't want to be waiting for something. Medium is high enough to show relatively decent curved surfaces, but uh, keep an eye on this table over here. Let me show you what low does. Uh, when you change this detail setting, it has to recache the whole rendering, so we'll wait just a moment. And then look at these curved edges over here, specifically on the table. See? It's almost polygonal now. You can sort of see this is faceting. That doesn't mean that the model has physically changed. It's just that OpenGL is now set so low that it would be faster, but it will make little jagged edges like that. Things won't be smooth. So if you ever think, oh, I made an extrude or I made a model and it's faceted, make sure you've turned this back up. So if I turn this to high now, it'll freeze for a moment and then recalculate. And you'll see this will be a perfect circle again. It won't have any problems. Medium is generally fine. High is what you'll want to use for like if you're going to be presen presenting in OpenGL. Give that just a moment. Let it finish. For instance, if we were in open, if we were in uh, wireframe or final quality render works or in a render works mode, this would uh, be controlled by what's called the curve geometry setting. But in OpenGL, it's very simple. It's just low, medium, high. It's not complicated. We'll hit cancel on that. And because we hit cancel, it's going to reset the detail to medium. So it has to do another recalculation layer, but that should be faster than it took to do high the first time. The higher you set that, the longer that will take. So now you can see, you can sort of see some faceting going on here, but it's not too terribly bad. And that's just because we want to have this quick so that we can move around. We don't want to have to be thinking about the, the quality of the rendering at the moment. And that's another thing that's very important to understanding rendering. In rendering, you're trading quality for time. It's always a balance on both sides. You could, theoretically, grab every single slider bar on every single setting and rock it all the way up to full, and yes, your rendering will look great. But odds are, if you set all those things back to medium, your rendering will look great and only take 30 minutes as opposed to sliding everything to maximum and it taking upwards of two days in some cases. You're, you can really, really kill yourself on time if you're not careful, and that's a lot of what we're going to show you here today.